Howdy howdy, Devil here and welcome to a quick update video just to go over some of the things I'm working on and uh, kind of why I haven't been posting a whole lot of videos lately. So <clears throat> I've really, I haven't been posting a whole lot of videos lately because I've been busy in real life. Plus I've also been using uh, a lot of my spare time to track tournaments and to try to understand win loss rates per faction to fill out spreadsheets and and uh really to gain an understanding of uh very very specifically how the dow we are doing so uh i'll go over kind of what i'm doing and uh you know when i'll get back to sort of regular videos as well uh and i and i've made all these sort of public as well so i know there's some of you guys out on the, on the channel who love to go through spreadsheets, who love to analyze data. Uh, so these are definitely available on Discord. I have them on VClaws Discord, uh, the most up-to-date version, so you're welcome to go see them. So anyways, what first started uh, my desire to track down tournaments and to look at win and loss rates were uh, when the patch dropped and uh, there were some pretty big changes to the Dowie you know, they changed the mass of the Lords. They made all the Lords cheaper. They uh, uh, buffed a few other units here and there. And they made a pretty big change to the, the Rune of Wrath and Rune and the Master Rune of Wrath and Rune. And there was a lot of discussion as to whether it was a net nerf, a net buff, and uh, what that sort of meant to the Dowi. And one of the things I wanted to understand is uh, sort of where the dwarfs are in the competitive forum really to understand how the Dowie are doing in in competition and are really my hypothesis is that if the dwarfs are sort of in a really competitive state or overpowered you should see them over representative over over represented or at least equally represented in pick band tournaments you know the kind of competitive tournaments you see pretty frequently on turns channel and uh, you know that you see in uh, the ever chosen that is held by total the total war folks is ca in uh, england and uh, so i started tracking this because i really wanted to see what it looked like so i started this spreadsheet right here um because i wanted to see the win rate of every faction versus every other faction the win rate if they pick first and the win rate if they pick second and sort of that's what this uh a little bit does so i look at the beastmen they have a 46 percent win rate 61 percent win rate of picking first 44 percent win rate when picking second and 36 percent uh win rate when the pick is unknown who picked first is unknown that's sort of a dumping ground uh for uh gentlemen's agreements and stuff like that because they don't fit into other tournament formats and so now I've got 438 games which is about 876 data points and I mean, I'm keeping track of the tournaments that I'm gathering, um, how many games are played, where where the tournaments were aired, the date they were aired, because I really want to make sure anybody can go and verify the data that I'm gathering if they want to for themselves. And I'm kind of sort of opening new tabs when I enter new data, just in case someone wants to go back and uh, for some reason they want to take out some of these tournaments, uh, you know, I've heard arguments the both ways both ways that you want tournaments with a wide variety of players and some people say you want tournaments with the highest caliber of players i'm just gathering all the tournaments that i can get it doesn't matter to me i you know it it's something to understand that i'm gathering all the tournaments i'm gathering all the tournaments that i can get period for pick bands and then i'm going over and looking at okay did bretonia uh, in this case, they pick second and beat the Beastmen. You know, and uh, three times they pick first and beat Dark Elves, and so on and so forth. So you get the addition up here: how many times they pick first in one, how many times they pick second in one, and you know how many times they've won versus how many times they've lost, and what this all adds up to versus every other faction. Um, so there's another, there's two other sort of broadly available data sets that are out there and i'm keeping track of them separately the uh, next set of broadly available data is what's called a blind pick tournament where uh the ones you see most are run by v claw which are really really great the claw cup uh, and you see some parts of some tournaments that are run like this as well 
But essentially, you pick your factions you're going to play before the tournament starts, and when they're matched up, you pick you play that faction. And so it's you you know you're sort of bound to the luck of the draw somewhat. And uh, so far, uh, from September 11th to November 10th, I have 464 games recorded under this f tournament format for a total of 928 data points. And, you know, I, I to keep track, like th these are a little different to keep track of um, because I don't want to put in, uh, I can't put in mirror matches. So I have to look at which round, like I keep, like it's hard, like it's hard to make sure that you don't make mistakes. And I'm sure I've made some, uh, you know, but I do the best I can to minimize my chances for error. So I have a check down here, a check across here, which is going to be 34 games that are used. Then I have a check here, 464, 464, 464, and everything's got to add up before I can enter that data. And the reason I do one tab at a time is because if I get to the end and I've made a mistake, I can at least restart from the last one to try and get my data. So I've got the blind pick tournament and the uh, pick ban. And you know, one of the things that I'm seeing is really uh, you want, there's sort of three sets of three important parts of the data that you want to start where you can start trying to understand it and that is once every every faction has played 42 games uh then the sort of the end goal is to have every faction in each data set have been played 98 games so right now we've got uh they played 58 every faction on average has played 58 games some of us played as low as 26 like vampire counts in this case played as low as 26 and in this, uh, they played an average of 62 games. And you can already see some of the difference between the tournament formats, which is quite interesting. I don't know how much information this type of data is going to end up giving. It's really hard to say because some of the data is pretty messy when you get into the uh, when you get into the weeds. But it's starting to give some reasonable kind of large pass data which is to say, you know, what is the, what are some of the traits, some of the differences between pick ban tournaments and blind pick tournaments? Uh, do the win rates for the factions sort of make sense and come out the same no matter what type of tournament it is? Like this is what it should end up, the win rate between these two should end up being similar uh, between the pick bans and the blind pick tournaments. Where you really see the difference is in the, generally the pick rates and in, in that uh, in, black, in pick ban tournaments, there are some factions that just don't have a lot of hard counters and they tend to get picked a lot when you have to pick first. And I don't blame anyone, you know, you pick, you got one band, you wanna play a faction with a minimum number of hard counters or at least a, a counter that you could be competitive against. So you don't wanna open pick, uh, you know, wood elves. Opening, open picking wood elves would be bad you know, because you can be counterpicked with the Dowie, et cetera, et cetera. But you might be a little bit more, uh, you might be o more okay to open pick uh, Empire and then you got one band, you can ban the dwarfs and you're gonna be even against a lot or say um, the high elves or, or factions like this that tend to not have as many bad matchups. They still have do have bad matchups. Anyways, you're really seeing some of the differences between the two tournament styles. I think, which is quite interesting. I don't know uh, how, like I said, I don't know how deep into the data it will end up getting where the data will be useful or understandable. Uh, but I mean, I'm starting to ask questions as does this make sense? Does that make sense? Some of it doesn't, some of it does. And with any data set, uh, when you're looking at live data or data that's not really in a laboratory setting, really empirical evidence, I guess you would call it, you get really messy data and uh, you know, sometimes it makes sense. And when you look at that data, you tend to be able to look at it in a, more of a broad term saying that, um, you know, just for a lack of a better description, 70% of the data is mostly correct. Or 30% of the data is mostly incorrect. So this could be a true statement, but which part of the data is correct and which part is incorrect is actually can be difficult to discern uh, unless you have vast quantities of data. Anyways, I'm trying to see what I can get with these two. The last bit of data I'm trying to get is uh, the sort of quick battle data. And now this is a little bit harder because I wanna get live streams and only live streams uh, so I can just 
watch someone's live stream, get the games they played, and uh, put them in here. But unfortunately, uh, in live streams, there's only a there's a minimum amount of live streams you can get. Um, like I got Aerocrastic, Lotus Moon, Zardar, uh, Reaper, Flying Taco, Falcon, Exploding Hamster, Y Otter. Uh, you know, quite a, uh, quite a few, but it's still not enough to fill this out because there's no dwarf mains uh, that are playing a lot on here. There's no vampire. There's no uh, vampire coast mains that are playing a lot. And there's no Norska mains that are playing a lot. Um, you know. So this data is kind of, I'm going to say the wonkiest, it's a, kind of the weirdest, but uh, hopefully uh, if I get enough, I've got 480, 480 games. If we get to sort of that 900 game mark, uh, or sort of that, yeah, 800 game mark, hopefully the data flashes out. And what I'd eventually like to do is if we get the data on all three of these, to be able to compare the three separately and to see if they start to converge on a few things that we can start to understand. Now, I was asked to put some of the data together early, and so I did, and we have some of the summary data, um, which isn't really ready because, I mean, there's different rule sets and everything else like that, and sort of the main purpose that I'm trying to find this data for is to compare one to another as opposed to combining them all. But, uh, you know, it's an interesting view when you combine them all. Uh, so if I can combine all the total data, we have 1,371 games. If we just do the competitive tourney data, we have 902 games. And then you start, you be able to get a percentage, a win percentage of one faction versus another. Now, um, this is not all, like, there's not enough games for this to be really accurate. I mean, there's not nearly enough games for it to be really accurate. There are some interesting trends or some interesting ideas and interesting error and within the data sets, uh, you know, but you know, when I look at the DAOE, when they combine all their competitive tournaments, they're at 53% win rate, which I'm ecstatic to see that they're doing quite well, even though they're still not uh, on par with, uh, I would call on par top tier in the pick ban format. They're very uh, popular in the blind pick tournament format. And I would guess that's because the Dwarfs have more good matchups than bad matchups in general. And uh, that's been the case for actually some time where the Dwarfs have had more good matchups than bad matchups, but they just have not had enough bad matchups that they aren't selected a whole lot in pick band tournaments. Anyways, they're at 53% win rate so far. I mean, that could fall uh, somewhat over the next uh, month. I don't know when the next patch is coming out. I imagine it's before Christmas. Uh, but we'll see. It could definitely fall. Um, but it's looking pretty good overall. And you can see uh, sort of some of the trends. I mean, the Dwarfs got a 56% win rate against Beastmen. 63% uh, against Bretonia. I mean, Beastmen, that's unexpected, uh, but good. Uh, against Bretonia, you would expect that. 55% win rate against Chaos. This is something interesting. Is uh, I had a private conversation with my... Uh, multiplayer coach Aurora boss early in the patch and he said it's really interesting because he said early in the patch after playing a few games that the dwarves have surpassed chaos in uh, competitive in the competitive format I didn't believe him um, I mean I love Aurora boss he, 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 if you watch my videos you guys know if you're listening to Aurora you know I love you but I didn't believe you when you said dwarfs are better than chaos now but it looks like that might be the case uh still have a 33 percent win rate against dark elves 55 percent against win a uh, win rate against empire that's come back a long ways dwarfs used to dominate empire uh empire does have some tools but they're very specific to fight the dwarfs uh i'd say empire is competitive against the dwarfs in a tournament sense probably not as competitive in, on ladder because there are very specific builds that Empire needs to put together to be competitive. A 70% win rate against Greenskin, that seems out to me. 36% win rate against High Elves, okay, maybe that's correct. 38% uh, win rate against Lizardmen, that seems incorrect to me, because I think the Dwarves have a slight advantage against the Lizardmen, maybe more than a slight advantage right now against the Lizardmen. 60% against... Uh, uh, Norska, 0% against Skaven. Now that's because we've only played Skaven uh, four times. We've lost all four. Uh, Skaven's a tough matchup, but it's definitely winnable for the Dwarfs now. 
uh, 64% versus Tomb King, Kings, 57% for, uh, against Counts, Vampire Counts, 86% against, 86% win rate against Vampire, uh, the Vampirates or the Vampire Coast, and 80% win rate against the Wood Elves. Now, these will change a lot over the next uh, month, I would imagine, if we get, uh, let's say if we can get another 900 games, I don't think we'll get that much. We're probably going to get about another 400 games over the next month to add into here. But these will these these numbers in here will change, and there will be some that stay out, like the Lizardmen. You know, it could be that they have an advantage against the the Dowie, but I don't see it. Um, I mean, I think the Dwarfs had an advantage in the last patch still, even though slight. Although some would say it was very very even, or maybe slightly Lizardmen favored. I still felt the Norths had an advantage, but it's very close nevertheless, and the Lizardmen got some big time nerfs. I mean, losing one melee attack with Temple Guard, losing losing 25 extra gold for Red Crested Skinks. Um, you know, they, they, they really got hit hard in terms of those small things that make big differences in builds versus the Dowie, um, which is just my thoughts. I mean, other people may see it differently, obviously. And then, you know, you look at the, the overall, when you when you got it up here, um, we have all 1,200 games. You can see all the percentages. I think the main thing that I'm finding quite interesting is that no matter whether you look at the blind format, the uh, quick battle format, or the uh, pick ban format, the win loss percentages are really not not far out like 36 percent is the lowest here to 60 percent on the quick battles we have uh 36 to 65 and in uh blind we have 38 to 61 when you combine them really when you combine them all you're looking at 43 to 59 you know, in the tourney in the tourney scene, you're kind of looking at 41 to 56. It's a pretty balanced game. Like I'm really damn impressed so far at these numbers overall. So I think uh, that's one of the things that's being flushed out is that uh, the game in general is pretty well balanced, considering. Now there are some very still very lopsided matchups inside of here, but uh, you know the game has been pretty well balanced. Anyways. These are the things that sort of I've been using my free time to do over this patch cycle. Now, uh, this does take a little bit of time. I mean, I've, I've looked at, uh, you know, I guess 27, 2,700 games. Uh, sorry, not 27, 1,370 games I've looked at uh, over the last two months. And that does take some time to go and look because, you know, you got to pick out the data. You have to look at who won, who lost, uh, whether it was a pick ban or and if it's pick ban who picked first if you can get it sometimes you know you can look around and you just can't pull it out of the the off the video sometimes you can so it does take a little bit of extra time so that's been really taking most of my free time and i haven't had as much free time over the last two months as i would have liked and my free time is going down uh sort of between now and the new year. So I'm going to, I've committed to try and maintain this for this one cycle. So um, really to see what does one cycle of information look like in terms of the win loss rate? Is there any good information you can get out of it? Lots of times there isn't, there might be some. Uh, I really w started taking this information because I wanted to understand how the Dowie were doing. I mean, I don't really care about other factions as that much, to be honest. I mean. Uh, I just want to understand how the dwarfs are doing in context and sort of look at their good matchups and bad matchups. Uh, but you got to get all the data to get to try and get some understanding. Uh, sort of, it's a lot of work for a little for a small amount of data. But uh, I find some of it to be quite interesting. I don't know if there'll be anything really useful or beneficial that comes out of it aside from sort of the meta differences between data sets and a few little nuggets here and there. Um, but that's what I've been working on. So I won't have a lot of videos coming up over the next two months, sort of into until we get into the new year and uh, life slows down because I've been very, very busy and the new patch comes and I'll stop taking this data and I'll start using my free time to make videos again. So 
Uh, for those of you that are hoping to see more videos, sorry, there won't be a whole lot over the next two months. Uh, but there will be more videos coming in the new year once I've stopped uh, tracking this data. And uh, I think I'll be getting back on track with uh, campaign stuff. I really want to finish up my Mortal Empire campaign stuff before the Warhammer 3 comes out, which may be, you know, I, maybe it's next September, maybe it's in July, maybe it's 2021, or maybe it's next Christmas. I don't know. I, I want to make sure I go through and get all my campaign stuff done. I haven't been doing a whole lot of multiplayer uh, aside from just tracking it and trying to make sure I stay on top of the data. But for those of you that have been wondering uh, what I've been up to, that's what I've been up to. So anyways, uh, you know, uh, hope to hear from you down below in the comments. Say hello. And uh, with that said, I hope you found this stuff interesting. And I hope you can wait till the new year for some more actual content. And with that said, I, I will see you soon.